Hello everybody, uh, welcome to BTW. This is our brief reflection on our past weekend teach. Now usually Brent Hudson is the one who is scheduled to do this, but because he's receiving medical attention today, nothing serious, uh, I'm going to do my best to fill in. Just want to take a moment and uh, remind us of something in this uh, past weekend as we looked at this whole idea of God calling back the people of Israel after the exile uh, to rebuild the temple. It's an interesting uh, point that um, God really did uh, all the work uh, to make this happen. Uh, he worked with the pagan uh, king, uh, Cyrus, and uh, he created the environment for uh, the people to give back all of the uh, items that belonged to the temple. Um, in a sense, God did so much where the people of Israel didn't really need to do anything. It's interesting, though, that the one thing that um, all God asks the people to do is to be faithful um, as he's carrying out this purpose of rebuilding the temple. Um, but again, because of pressures from without and apathy from within, the people struggled. And once again, God sent messengers, Haggai and Zechariah, to stir people up. And I can't help but think that often when we think about spiritual leadership in the life of our church even today, that's often one of the key roles of leadership. It's to, to be used of God uh, to stir people up and to help remind people. Because again, we all falter and struggle at times. One final thing I just want to highlight from this story, and I want to actually go back to the actual chapter and just read one little section for you. It's that moment when actually the people had come back and the foundation had been laid on the original where the original temple had been built, but unfortunately destroyed. And we read this. It says, um, And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud. And when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy. And no one could distinguish between the sound of the shouts of joy from the sounds of weeping. You know, the, the idea here is this, is that um, I, I think that that one idea really captures me because here we have um, the sense of the temple once again is being rebuilt, but it's only a shadow of the former glory of when the original temple had been built. And the people who could remember the original temple were, were weeping at, in a sense of how small this next temple was. And in a sense, I'm sure they were thinking about all the regret and issues and struggle that had led to this. And so they were sad. And yet the younger generation were glad that at least the temple was being rebuilt and a place of worship was happening once again. Just on reflection, I think that this is a great illustration of sometimes the tensions that we can have even in our own church and generationally speaking, where you can have older generations um, you know, feeling sad and, and, and maybe um, mourning over the loss of something that had happened in their earlier times. And yet, and yet now the young people are glad because they feel like God's at least moving forward and doing a new work, even though it's very different from the older generation's expectations. And so you can have the sounds of weeping and the sounds of rejoicing all mixed together. And I just think that sometimes we have to really kind of understand those generational differences and see how the very same thing that we're all looking at can be seen so differently. Anyway. That's uh, um, our by the way for this week. Uh, hope that you uh, are enjoying the story. Bye for now.